Hey, this is Daryl, as a service. The Loop app is almost here, and if you want your organization to use it, there's a few steps you need to take as an administrator. Uh, a thing to think about, it's not quite ready yet from a compliance perspective, so do take a precaution if you're a highly regulated organization. For those of you who want to enable it, there's a few steps that um, involve PowerShell and involve the Office Cloud Policy Services. So we'll open up the uh, link that's referenced here in the, the message center message, and it takes us through to um, the Manage Loop Experiences page. So this will guide us through enabling it for SharePoint. Um, you probably have been here too if you, if you wanted to enable it for Loop Components and Teams in Microsoft Whiteboard. Um, there was also some steps here to enable it for loop components within Outlook and Word. And finally, down here, some component, or rather some settings for enabling the loop app. And so that's the latest addition to this page. So first of all, we'll just make sure that we've got it enabled in SharePoint. We're going to go into uh, PowerShell. Uh, I've connected to my tenant already, and I'm going to run the get SPO tenant uh, command and just to confirm that one of the settings there shows that loop is enabled. So we'll just scroll up here and find that. And there it is, loop is enabled. Okay, so that is true. Um, so that's great. If you did need to make it true, if you wanted to set it to be enabled, then this is the command you'd need to run there, set. SPO tenant is fluid enabled, true. Okay, so what's the next step? Next step is also to uh, use the cloud policy service. Uh, we'd go into config.office.com and we're going to create a cloud policy service uh, or rather a cloud policy. Um, so let's click into here. I have created one already. And so it is uh, the all MWM group or policy. Um, I've given it a name, I probably should give it a description. Uh, I have scoped it to a specific security group. So I have set up a security group and I've made uh, four people members of that group. Now that's how you would add just a few people. Uh, you could load that, that number of people into that group CSV file. Um, and if you are one of the lucky organizations that uses Azure AD Premium, Premium 2, then you can um, use dynamic uh, membership for groups and add everyone in from your organization. I don't have that luxury. Um, so I've uh, added members to those groups. Um, and in our next step, we have gone looking for the loop policies. Now this is quite a, a large list of capabilities to create a policy for controlling Office and how it operates on devices and access to cloud services. 2,202 policies today. And now I didn't want to scroll through and look for those, so in the search box I look for loop. And um, this is listing uh, the Outlook policy, the um, support for loop files in Microsoft apps. So that covers things like Outlook. Uh, rather, um, it wasn't Outlook, it was da, 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 loop, Outlook and Word. Right, so now that we can uh, use Word uh, loop components in Word, then that's what covers that scenario. Uh, but the new addition to this is the uh, can view loop files in loop. Right, so for each of these, uh, you are um, configuring. And so you go into a policy, you'll enable it. You'll probably see that if you haven't configured this already, it will be not configured. And um, enable that policy, and then you'll save that policy and publish it. Now it does take a, a little while to have this policy take effect. So if you want to make this possible for your people early and ahead of time, then do it now. It can take up to 24 hours if you haven't configured this policy already, and it can take a little while also if you're making a change to this policy. So I've already done that. I'm not gonna kick off the process again and click update. Um, that policy has been created and rolled out. And so this means that when the loop private preview becomes public preview, or when it becomes generally available, then the loop app will be able to read loop files. And so we'll see more of that shortly.
uh, as the message says, uh, it is um, sometime before the end of March, you'll be able to access the Loop app in public preview. So getting ready for that time, um, thank you for joining me. Hopefully these steps uh, have given you just an overview of what you need to do as an admin. Uh, there are some considerations, as I said earlier, if you are a organization that is highly regulated and you uh, need to be able to, for example, download fluid files when you're doing a discovery and an e-discovery and you need to um, discover the content within there for cases and for matters, uh, then it's not quite there yet. Um, but for those who do want to use it early, those are the steps that you need to take. So thanks for joining in and uh, stay tuned for more uh, about Loop as it's coming out, um, as the Loop is, uh, app is released. I'll have a lot of content around that time. See you again soon. Bye for now.